Welcome to Empower to Grow, the podcast. I am your host, Hanan al Basha, the business doctor. Following our conversations with empowered women who woke up one day and consciously claimed, I am more than enough, I am worthy, I am empowered to grow. And along their empowering journey towards realizing their own potential and their quest for growth, they became a beacon of hope and guidance for others. May you also find your inner power to grow. Hi, everyone. Um, as, as per the intro, this is Reem Harbat, and I'm so honored and so pleasured to have her here today. And um, because we connect on so many levels, so we're Middle Eastern women, and uh, we decided to take our lives and control of our lives and our fate, and um, we're creating something maybe for a lot of women that is out of this world. So Reem, the show is called Empower to Grow. What was like, what was the first thing that came to your mind when I sent you the invitation? Reem, I have this podcast. Can you come and interview? What was the first thing that came when you heard that phrase, Empower to Grow? Hannah, first, thank you so much for having me in your podcast. It's really an honor. I was really happy, first of all, that another Middle Eastern woman, <laughs> woman is in, in is inviting me as well. And I realized that I found myself not alone because I, for so long, I thought that I was by myself. And, you know, first of all, being a Middle Eastern woman and um, having all this uh, limiting beliefs and constraints from whether it's from the society or maybe family, or it's maybe even within, um, knowing that someone else like you is out there supporting me as well and just having Rooting similar stories. <laughs> yes, it was awesome. So first of all, I was really happy and really excited, really proud. Um, I never felt that I was proud of myself, but looking at you, I was like, I'm really proud of you. Uh, and again, the idea of um, empowering um, others to grow is exactly um, what I need what I felt that I needed throughout my journey to reach where I am today. And I was like, you know, this is awesome. Uh, I'm super happy that I will be part of this because I have a lot to share, a lot, you know? And I know that we just spoke a little bit before the show, yes. but <laughs> man, like what you've said is like unbelievable and you deserve all the love, the support and the respect because... Um, your mission and everything that you've done to reach where you are right now and with the new mission of empowering other women to grow together is just unbelievable. It's amazing. Now I get it's emotional an- right away talking about empowering women. So <laughs> this is going to be an exciting episode. <laughs> this is just, we're starting. We're just starting. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for, for all of this. Uh, it's, it's honestly, it's my pleasure. I told you, I mean, we, we virtually met in uh, KPB knowledge business blueprint. And for me seeing another woman stand up and say, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing in the knowledge. I'm into my self education. I'm believing in myself and I'm creating something for me. It was always about, yes, you know, I, I'm always saying we complement each other. If we compete, Absolutely. we both lose. But when we complement, we really literally are raising each other up. And that is Absolutely. a beautiful state to be in um, around the world. Men, women, children, adults, everyone. I, th- I believe we all have a mission to, to help someone out by one word, by one smile, by one pat on the back. You can create that kind of a difference and you can empower that person beyond. I recall and I sit and, and reflect on people in my life who at a point were there for me. And I had not realized that gift. I had not realized that, you know, what they said to me, that statement, the way they looked at me, that smile is what kept me going. And that is Mm. why I'm so passionate about this. Um, This is the message I keep giving the ladies on my group, on my Facebook group, on all my, you know, social media presence is like, you can do this as per your own terms. And I think that is the very important part. And that is what connected me to you the most is, that you can create this as per your rules. You created the rules. So moving on to creating the rules, you empowered yourself to grow in a unique way. Excuse me. So tell us a bit about you. Tell us a bit about, you know, your journey on on finding your own voice, literally. 
Well, um, okay, just going back to the roots of um, where do I come from or how did I start? I came from, uh, you know, I come from Jordan, which is a this tiny country in the Middle East. And, With a um, lot of history. <laughs> yeah, but well, and um, I was raised by uh, two loving parents. Uh, I always keep saying this. They made us think that we were rich. And when I grew up, I realized that we were not. But the good thing is that we were raised to um, have ethics and, and uh, let's say, education and uh, hard work as our main, uh, let's say, uh, traits. We were raised to be ethical and to be, and sometimes, you know, I wonder, like, you know, it helped me. It helped me a lot. Sure. But also it was like a barrier because we were conditioned to think in a, a certain way. My mom and dad, they were both teachers, educators, and uh, that was the most important thing for us, or for me at least, is to always be an A student because they used to work so hard for so little. And, um, you know, uh, seeing my mom uh, coming back from work and uh, uh, immediately cooking and then sleeping, she's like exhausted. There was no helpers at that time. Uh, me and my uh, four brothers, brother and sister. And uh, I was like, there should be something else to life other than this. But of course, as children, we always listen to what our parents tell us. So they wanted me always to be the A student, to get high grades because I have to be a dentist. I didn't know, I didn't know why should I be a dentist, but <laughs> I knew that that's, that was the right thing to do. So I have to be a doctor because my dad's a doctor, but I failed him. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Literally, like I don't like anything about, about medicine. I don't like anything, but I mean, this is how... Uh, I was raised to think. And um, I don't know, the last year at school, I got 94.5 GPA out of 100. This is how they do it in Jordan. So it was really high. I was really doing well. I got a scholarship. But at the same time, I felt I was a failure because I couldn't become a dentist. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I, I was admitted in the business and finance school. So I was like, what the hell is business? Because there was, I haven't seen anybody as an entrepreneur or, or a businessman within our, uh, you know, our family. So it was just uh, employees. So I knew that I had to become an employee, work hard so that I get high salary so that I can get a better position. And this is, uh, the thing that will lead me to financial freedom or to become rich. I grew up, I realized that this is a myth. There's something wrong in the equation. It does not add up because the more we work, like I see my mom and dad, they work so hard, but there is, they're always complaining about money. True. And, and one day, one of my professors at, at the university, he was talking about being a certified public accountant in the States. And like, this is, uh, the, if you're an accountant, this is the best thing that you should uh, do. And, and this, uh, like, uh, uh, it triggered, um, I was like, I can go to the States and study and get my certificate. And this is my ticket to the other side of the world or to life and I have to do this so I told my dad I want to become a CPA and I remember he looked at me and he was like uh what, what? what? <laughs> exactly what? Like, what are these titles beyond engineer what? What is doctor and lawyer what are the other titles <laughs> that's it that's yep. it like what so I told him you know you go to the states you apply for this and you study for like uh um, four parts and you get the certificate and then if you do this you get that and he said how much so I was like I think it cost like maybe at that time uh three thousand dollars for the course and then I have to travel to the U.S. to sit for the exam and he was like uh excuse me forget it of course and he said it in Arabic I I, I he said, Oli Allah, forget it. Like, just, uh -uh. you know. 
And that did not stop me. That was the first turning point in, uh, of my life. Like he said, no, forget it. But I couldn't. And I kept digging and I kept telling everyone, like anyone I see, uh, I will tell them, hey, you know, I'm going to the States. I will become a CPA. I was saying it out loud without knowing at that time, I haven't read the book, The Secret. I haven't ever heard about something called the law of attraction or anything, you know, mm -hmm. but I was just telling everyone that this is what I'm going to do. I was so certain at that time that I'm going to do it. I don't know how. I was 19, but I knew that I'm going to do this. And it happened. My dad, he saw how much I was passionate about this and he took a loan and he sent me to the States. I was the first one uh, in my family as a girl to go to the States and get my certificate and work there for a little bit. And then I came back to the Middle East. But that incident changed my life. It made me believe that if I just, if I am certain about what I want to do, regardless of what anybody tells me, if I am certain, and if I speak it and say it out loud, then I'm sure that the universe, the God, whatever you want to call it, okay, is going to help me back and give it to me. Manifest it. And since then, since then, this is how my whole life is working. I always ask for what I want, always. No matter who is the guy or the person or the someone in front of me, I will always say what I want because what is the worst thing that could happen? You will get no as an answer. It will not kill you, you know? Exactly. So just do it. And as yeah, Tony so says, there's always, you know, if you don't get it the first time, try again, try a different way, try a different way, try a different way. Absolutely. Keep trying until you get it. You're, it's just the, the approach, not the goal that needs to change. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So that became your, your um, kind of first taste of what it is to be, to empower yourself to grow in the way that you want as per your own terms. Absolutely. It was the first incident. And then since then, many things happened, but uh, that thing like really made me realize that I can do what I want. After that, I got married to um, my colleague and my best friend uh, for a couple of years, but I knew that it was not for me. I was not happy. Uh, maybe I was young. I don't know. I was young, but I mean, like I was not uh, ready for it. And, you know, so adding up a few things here and there, I found myself in a place where I don't want this and I can't do this. And I reminded myself that I have two options, either to continue in this path, to please the society. And you know this, Hannah, in our society, it's like a taboo to yes. get divorced. Yeah. And I was like, Either I continue in this path and be miserable for the rest of my life. The guy is amazing. I'm not ready. There's something wrong in this relationship. I don't know what it is. I'm too young to think I can't do this. And either I, I, I go and become miserable the, the rest of my life, or I just end this and see what is the other option. But I'll take responsibility for that. And I went to my mom and dad and I was like, listen, I can't do this anymore. Thank God they were like any other Middle Eastern family. My mom started crying. My dad was so sad. They were like devastated. Like you, Reem, the cutest girl in the family. Why would you put yourself in this? Like you're good. You're smart. But I was like, I'm not I happy. can't. Mm -hmm. I'm not happy. And they, they saw that. So they helped me and... And the guy was really good. We ended it in a very smooth way, really. Like, thank God. I don't know. Again, this is from the universe that I had good intentions. I was not bad, but I couldn't just go on with this. And also that incident or that event empowered me more and more because my life changed completely after that. Again, I felt that I was so strong despite the fact that I, I had those also limiting belief inside me because I'm divorced. People are looking at me in a 
different way, you know, yeah, but like, I acted, <laughs> I exactly, I acted as if they don't exist. I, I, I've been for a long time. I felt that I was alone, you know, I was like avoiding people, avoiding talking about things or thinking about the future. I just want to live the moment. I want to do more things for me to compensate that feeling of, you know, being failure, being divorced, uh, all the labels that I've been given by the society. I was trying to compensate that by doing more things for me that would make me feel good, you know? And it, and it happened. I was very, I was climbing the corporate ladder. I became a CFO, a member of the board of directors. I was so successful at what I was doing. And I was so happy. I was making a lot of money. Okay. And I was helping everybody. My brother, he went to the States and he did his, uh, he um, did his MBA and I funded the whole thing. I was, I felt that I was so powerful because I'm helping people you know, and it feels so good. Uh, until I met, let's say, the man of my dreams, because uh, by the way, a lot of people along the way, um, you know, old men, they were like, I don't say harassing me, but yeah, now when I think about it, I was harassed a lot, telling me that, hey, I have three wives, you will be the fourth. Um, I have a lot of money. <laughs> Yeah, I have a lot of money, so um, I want to marry. And I was like, no, I don't want to get married to you. I want to love someone and have a right relationship. And he, I remember he used to tell me, um, do you think that you're getting uh, younger? You're getting older. You want to be able to have kids. And uh, do you think that you are going to find love? This is like BS. What are you talking about? So again, I've been under a lot of pressure from everything around me, mm -hmm. but I kept like holding on and knowing that I will get what I want. Maybe not now, but I know that I will get it. And I met my husband in Iraq, which is like a war zone. And <laughs> it was like literally in the weirdest incident ever. We got married. We had the most beautiful child ever. And I had to quit my job. My boss asked me to quit my job on the day I gave birth. And that was also um, another crazy thing. So yeah. I'm telling you the story Not of this my life. I don't know if I'm that. answering a question or... No, they are. They are. I mean, these, these are all things that I think what you're saying is exactly these are life incidents or life altering incidents that we don't realize. I mean, now that, that you're more enlightened and now you can reflect and, and, you know, think in retrospect, you just realize now that these were life altering incidents for you at the time, possibly not at the time you could have felt disempowered in a lot of ways. And True. you could have felt like, you know, you're going against the tides and, and you have to fight your way up. But these were all blessings. And we were talking about this before. Yeah. So that this, this in essence was every one of these incidents, as much as it could have hurt you happening, as much as it could have made you feel powerless one way or another, it was only a stepping stone in, in a blessing towards your finding your voice, finding your own independence, being able to come from a place of giving and service, even though that is not what you had planned and standing up for yourself, literally just that just standing up for yourself Absolutely. and that i don't know if, if that isn't self-empowerment i don't know what would be but <laughs> that is exactly it so in from from that perspective from from where you stand now what would you tell or have told your 20 or in that case your 19 year old self what are what other pearls of wisdom you would have looked back and say girl here we go this is what i need to tell you uh well Definitely, I would, I would, or I will, whatever, pat <laughs> my, myself on the back and say, hey, girl, you've done a great job. Because I wouldn't change anything from what happened, mm -hmm. literally. Because all the mess that I've been through, as they say, your mess would be your success. And that exactly, the mess that happened to me or that I've been going through were exactly um, 
what really empowered me, what, re what made me reach where I am today. I wouldn't change a thing. Maybe I would have, like, I wish I would have known things sooner, especially about self-education and, uh, let's say, um, uh, maybe stuff about the business sooner. But again, I wouldn't change anything about my life because all those incidents shaped who I am today. All those stories and all those experiences shaped my life right now. I wouldn't be the Reem now if I did not have all that before. And I think as the young Reem at the age of 19, when I first stood to, um, in front of my dad and told him, I want to uh, go to the States, I think I was strong enough at that time for that little girl in that situation with all the constraints and all the limiting beliefs. I think I did a great job. So I don't think I would put more pressure on that little girl because it was when I like, sometimes I look at other teenagers right now and I feel like I was like without having internet at that time or yeah. <laughs> resources or guidance, I think I did a great job. So that's great. Yeah. So from, from that perspective, then if, if you put yourself in a time capsule or if we had a time capsule and it was coming back to you, what would you say your 90 year old self is going to thank you for? Thank me for, um, for standing out for myself or for, um, for, um, you know, always doing or always, uh, um, standing for what I believed and for uh, what I really wanted in this life and having the courage, um, to stand up and to say that and never apologize for who I am and for what I am doing, because, um, I learned, and that is recently, that self-love is so important. And we were not taught in our society, we were not taught to, to, to do that or to accept that. We no. would think that this is just crazy. It's like, yeah, it's vanity. I mean, yes. oh my God, look at her. She's taking time for herself. I was like, what's wrong with her? <laughs> so absolutely, I would definitely thank myself for um, digging more and for wanting to grow more and to empower myself more and more like it's becoming as an obsession you know some other women or some let's say people in life they would be like obsessed with other material things in life but I realized that um, here our mindset is our biggest asset and again I'm using financial terms I love finance and <laughs> And it, because, because, you know, looking at us in the pandemic or when the economy is down or when the governments, you know, decides to change things up, the only thing that is left for you that no one can take away from you is your mindset and your brain and your knowledge. So I would definitely thank myself for this, for what I am doing for myself, which is also it reflects to what I will be doing for my child and for my husband and, and the people that I'm um, inspiring and impacting as well. It's beautiful. So if we are to sum this up, you are on a stage, you're giving a speech and it's about the topic is being empowered to grow and you have tens of thousands of women in front of you. What would be the one statement you finish off that speech with? What would be your last message to them? Oh my God, it will be, <laughs> you can do it. It's exactly like yours. You can do it. If I was able to do it, a girl from the Middle East, from a very small, uh, uh, humble family, if I was able to head the top chart in the US, if I was able to be recognized by Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi all the way while I'm in Saudi Arabia, if I was able to speak to Dean and to Elena and to so many amazing entrepreneurs on the other side of the world, if I was able and, and I'm doing more, like it's, I'm not going to stop anytime soon. If I can do that 
then hell, you can do it too. That's beautiful. I thank you for your time and for sharing your energy with us and sharing all your lessons. And um, I want to ask you, where can our listeners and our viewers, where can they find you in the virtual space? Um, I'm almost everywhere. You can find me uh, on Facebook, Kareem Kharbat, uh, R-E-E-M-K-H-A-R-B-A-T, or on my website, uh, reemkharbat.com, which is R-E-E-M-K-H-A-R-B-A-T. Uh, I'm on Instagram as well. Uh, on my podcast, The Entrepreneur Accelerator, uh, I speak about all uh, business strategies, tips, tricks, and I interview um, influencers on all the fields of mindset marketing sales and um, i would love to help in any way uh, for uh, hanan's audience and um it's really a pleasure thank you so much uh that was really exciting i felt that i spoke a lot so no it was amazing you you spoke enough and i'm sure we can have many more episodes to come to i mean if we go into our individual mm-hmm. stories and stuff we, we can we can definitely pack a whole podcast just for that <laughs> i know i know I it know. was beautiful thank you so much Reem. thank you for accepting the invitation and um i can't thank wait for everyone to to share to share with everyone everything you said and to um Yes, you can to let every woman know wherever she is in the world that she can do whatever she sets her heart and mind to. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have an amazing day. (laughs) Bye. Thank you for listening to the Empowered to Grow podcast. For further engagement with a tribe of empowered women, join my Facebook group, Empowered to Grow, or visit my website, www.hananelbasha.com. I'll catch you on the next episode. And until then, know that empowered you empowers others. Love, abundance, and prosperity to you all.